Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for watching. So I just have a word of encouragement for someone out there, maybe a couple people. I never really do know. Um, but I know that the Lord has been sowing this in me for the past couple of days. And today it's finally kind of been packaged together and ready to ship. Okay. So, um, if you're, if you're feeling like your life is, um, falling apart at the seams or, um, you just took a huge blow or, um, there's some sort of huge injustice that's taken place in your life or many injustices that has taken place in your life or you're feeling defeated and like you're tired of this world or you've been robbed from right the enemy seeks to still kill and destroy that's that's what he does okay so if you're in any of those categories or you know what you woke up and you're just hung you're hungering and thirsting after righteousness and you're like i want more god Okay, this video is going to be for you. Okay, and, and I, I've discussed this many times before in my videos, but in case you're not familiar, five years ago, I had this, what I call breakdown breakthrough. And the reason I call it that is um, what I went through was very similar to what people, you know, in this life would call a breakdown. Okay, but at the same time, I can't just regret it and, and say it was the worst part of my life and, um, you know, call it just a breakdown breakdown because really what it was for me also was a breakthrough and the reason it was that is because I chose to dig okay and so we'll talk more about that in a few minutes and what I mean by digging okay but I was at this point probably the lowest point I've ever reached in my entire life I became very depressed I had a lot of um, traps that the enemy had set up for me strategically uh, one huge blow followed by many little blows along the way um, all meant to rattle me, to shake me, to destroy me. I mean, I have the dreams where, you know, the enemy was telling me that he was trying to kill me. He was going to kill me, you know. Um, and, and a lot of times that is just, you know, he can't kill us. The, our number, the number of our days are resting in the Father's hands, okay? But he will try to um, inhibit us. He will try to destroy everything around us to uproot us from Christ, okay? And so that was his point, and that's what he wanted to do. And I had, you know, prophetic dreams before my breakdown breakthrough, which I was very young in dreams, very young um, in interpretation and that sort of thing. But now that I look back to them, I see the meaning of them, you know, and I had dreams where I was crying. I was in a deep state of mourning, even saying, um, I just want to die. Okay. So I could never sum up for you in just a short video and in, in a few words, what I've passed through in the past five years, those closest to me have seen me journey through it. Okay. And I can tell you, and I assure you 100%, it has been anything but easy. Okay. <laughs> even the pleasant moments, they still weren't easy. Okay. It's taken a lot for me. Um, you know, I chose to dig during that season and that's what turned it around for me and that is what has made me who I am today um, you know spiritually prophetically um, a lot of my gifts have opened up during this time um, because I chose to dig okay and God wants you to dig also so that he can give you more and he wants you to dig also who has been suffering through these trials who has been um, experiencing these injustices and to let you know that his that disappointment can be his appointment it could be one of his biggest appointments in your life okay remember that Satan cannot do anything to you and without permission. And I know a lot of people don't want to swallow that, but it's biblical. We look at Job. We look at, at Peter, right? Jesus said, Satan is asked to sift you like wheat. Okay. You look at, at Job where Job walked before the Lord and said, I want to, you know, tempt him. I want to test him in this way. And the Lord said, okay, okay. And maybe people don't like that. But the reason that he's doing that is one of our main purposes for being here is bearing fruit. Okay. And, and we're here to overcome, right? God wants us to overcome the enemy and his schemes. And so nothing can be thrown at us that we will not rise up and overcome. That's what he wants, okay? And so a lot of times he allows those situations to happen and take place so that good can be produced from it. His will can be produced from it, okay? But sometimes we take it personal and sometimes we we miss what God is doing and we we become in this rut where we feel like we're 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 just stuck there we're the victim everything bad keeps happening to us and we handle the situation we handle the situation the wrong way okay we can choose um, Jesus said 
you know, in, in the Word of God that it would be impossible for sorrows to not come. Sorrows are going to come. It's what we do with those sorrows that makes the difference, okay? And 2 Corinthians 7.10 says, you know, talks about godly sorrow and worldly sorrow, okay? So godly sorrow produces repentance not to be regretted. So we can take a situation and choose godly sorrow out of it, okay? Which will end up in a situation that we can't regret, like my past and, and the past five years. I can't regret those five years because it has made me who I am today. <clears throat> Without it, I would not be walking in my um, in my giftings and my anointings and who God has called me to be if it weren't for those moments. But if I hadn't done that, I would have chose worldly sorrow. And 2 Corinthians 7.10 talks about worldly sorrow and that leads to death, okay? That leads to the mentality of, I am tired of this life. I don't wanna be here anymore and trust me when I say to you, I have been there. I have experienced that. I remember crying. Uh, I mean, just could not stop crying. We couldn't go even out to the mall. I would just break out into tears. I was grieving, you know, from different trials and things that the enemy had set up for me. Shame, brokenness, facing the mirror stuff. You know, I call, I say that, um, I say, have a saying that shame is when you break your own heart, you know. So I had broke my own heart upon, you know, and then had other strategic things that the enemy had thrown at me as well um, that I was dealing with. And so I was grieving just like a person that has lost someone that they love would grieve. I was grieving in that same way, okay. And so I would cry to the point of almost throwing up. I totally understand what it is to be in that place, but I made a choice there. I made a choice that it was like, I can live or die. Because if I continue down that road, I'm going to die. And that's what the Word of God says. That uh, worldly sorrow, if you choose to exclude God and not pull God into the situation, you are choosing worldly sorrow and it will produce death. Okay, So disappointment, those disappointments, those sorrows that were not promised, that aren't going to happen, right? It, it would be impossible if they if they didn't come jesus said okay but we can choose that to make the disappointment turn into his appointment but it has to be a choice okay and i chose to dig and i want you to choose to dig and god wants you to choose to dig because he has allowed this to come into your life so that he can produce good out of it but he needs you to choose to let it turn into that okay so the scriptures say, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. That's James 4, 8, okay? And so it takes that first step. Notice it says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. So that never goes away. Even just the past couple of days, there's something I'm like, Lord, I want something. So I know, and I'm not talking about any sort of physical thing. I'm talking about a spiritual thing. And I was like, I know the right thing to do and how to get God to come close to me and talk to me and minister to me is by me drawing near to him first, because that's what the scripture says. And that is what my experience has told me time and time again um, in the past five years. I draw near to him. He draws near to me, okay? And that's what the scripture says, okay? And it says, you will seek me and you will find me when you search for me with all of your heart, okay? And God has an extra special promise there and that is he is near to the brokenhearted, okay? And so when these sorrows come and they break our heart, right? When, when that takes place, we have something very special. We have an invitation to meet God, okay? But if we forget that, and if we choose to not use that passport, so to speak, that invitation, we end up choosing worldly sorrow instead, okay? So remember that if you are brokenhearted over something, I want you to know that God is super near to you. It is his promise, and I guarantee, uh, I'm telling you not just because his word says, but because I personally have experienced it myself, okay? I was super brokenhearted. I broke my own heart, and I had my heart broken many times in the past five years, okay? And so from that, I knew that God was near to me and I chose to give I chose to dig and to take him at his promises and his word and really it was all that I had. It was like that woman reaching out for the hem of Jesus. It was like I am this is this is it. It's either this or nothing for me. And so I chose to dig. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. Um but I want to say that um you know also to the people that if you just want more 
okay? It's the same promises. He says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. Okay, get a shovel and start digging. You already know where, where the treasure is, right? We sit it, or you already know what the shovel is and that is, you know, sitting at his feet, right? Like praying and, and just spending time with him, making him super important in your life, right? If we really look at our lives, sometimes it's like, you know, maybe 10% God and, and 90% everything else, but you keep increasing that to where it's 90% God and 10% everything else. And then pretty soon a hundred and then 110% where it's just God, you know, in your life and everything else, he manages it and we just rest in him, right? Okay. So choose to dig. I chose to dig in every situation that has made me who I am today, spiritually, um, prophetically. Everything who I am today did not come to me handed on a silver platter. I chose to dig. I chose to dig in the heat of the day, so to speak. I chose to dig in the middle of winter. I chose to dig when there were tears running down my face. I chose to dig when my heart was broken in ways that I never thought it could be broken. I chose to dig when I was lonely and and I felt like no one around would ever understand. I chose to keep digging. I chose to dig when the enemy threatened me, when he threatened my family. I still grabbed that shovel and kept digging, okay? And you can do the same thing and receive the same treasure. So let me tell you where the treasure is so that you know where to dig, right? I mean, if you're searching for treasure in the real life, you first need, you know, to know where the treasure is so you can start digging. And so, um, you know, I was talking with the Lord about this and I was writing that down and the, the treasure is found in being emptied, okay? The treasure is found in being broken. The treasure is found in being vulnerable, in being humbled, right? And in being honest, and the treasure is is found in facing the mirror, okay? Like I had said that shame is when you break your own heart. I was grieving from breaking my own heart. Um, Of course, I had other heartbreaks along the way as well. But one of the main things, I mean, just looking in the mirror spiritually and seeing the person that I had been as a Christian, And while that sounds like, oh, maybe that's condemnation, that doesn't sound like the Holy Spirit at all, you know, you weren't there. (laughs) You weren't there. And God uses those times to cleanse us, right? He says, the pure in heart will see God. Well, you're not going to see God until you're pure in heart, and you can't be pure in heart until you get a deep cleanse. And so that's the process I went through was, hey, you want to see God? You're going to go through a deep cleanse. And that was what I had to go through. And those are, that was his appointment that he had set up through me, set up for me through my disappointment. But I had to choose that. And if I hadn't have chose that, I would have chose to be depressed. Maybe I would have chosen to like cope with my depression through alcohol or drugs or, or something. Who knows? I don't know. But instead I chose to cope, so to speak, with a shovel in my hand, digging for this treasure, okay? Being open before the Lord, being honest before the Lord. I had days and seasons where I had to be in my prayer time five times a day. It was all I could do to get through the day. I was just sharing with someone uh, a couple weeks ago that, you know, um, I was remembering that time where I couldn't even make normal decisions during the day, like what to feed my kids, you know? Um, it's a lot of the reason that my mom lives here with us. I just was really struggling to get by because I was so humbled and so broken. But at the same time, God was using it to make me who I am, to build me spiritually, to cleanse me and make me pure in heart so that I could be fully effective in my giftings, okay? And so don't be afraid of being emptied. Don't be afraid of being broken. Don't be afraid of being vulnerable. If you feel those tears start to well up inside of you, go to your prayer time. Close the door, like Jesus said. Pray to your Father in secret. Cry. Just keep crying. Just cry and cry and cry until you are emptied. And then 10 minutes from now, you might need to do the same. I've been there. I know exactly what that feels like, okay? But just keep digging. Keep being vulnerable. Be naked before him. Be honest before him. Face the mirror. Um, I think I mentioned it a minute ago, but um, I, I faced the mirror so much that sometimes I was sick to my stomach and was going to throw up. I My nose bled a couple of times by how many times I cried over something that I did in the mirror that, the, that I was facing. 
So don't be afraid of those things. They hurt for the moment, but they're producing in us something far greater than we understand. Okay, so just keep digging. Um, it hurts, but but the treasure is there. Okay, um, I, I remember just blood, sweat, and tears. Okay, and it's, it's worth it in the long run, and you're going to get there too. Um, those closest to me know it's true and have watched me walk through this. I've had people judge um, my gifting. I've had people, I guess, assume that I like woke up here overnight or something. But I tell you again that, you know, the past five years have been anything but easy. And the grooming and the, the fiery furnace that I've walked through um, to get to my prophetic gifting, to get to where I am spiritually and that when I call, he answers, so to speak, did not come to me handed on a silver platter. I have worked very hard for it. I have dug and I have um, cried blood, sweat, and tears, okay? So um, just a word, this was something that came to me um, while I was writing this out and talking to the Lord. And so I don't know who this is for, but um, he wanted me to add in this uh, reminder and verse for someone out there. And that is, he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. Okay. Okay. So I hope this blessed someone. Um, and I hope that you pick up a shovel through this time and I hope that you dig and so that you can have all that God has planned to give you through this disappointment. So he can turn around in his appointment. Um, and so whatever the enemy intended for evil will be turned around into good and God can have his way. Okay, he's doing a mighty work in a lot of people. Um, when I first started walking through my uh, deep cleanse and time, you know, I took it very personal. I thought, why me? Why am I suffering this way? Why, you know, and all those types of things. And now I look around and I've heard from different prophetic people that they've journeyed through the same thing and that um, God is doing some mighty construction in a lot of his children right now. And I believe the reason he's doing that is because he's building us up, raising us up as trees of righteousness, as the word talks about, because what's coming next they're going to need some pillars. They're going to need some some strong towers. There's going to be a, a, a need for the, this, these types of Christians that aren't just Christians by words, but Christians by, you know, have been tried in the fiery furnace. They have walked through the fire, right? They've been, they've been refined, okay? And so don't take it personal. Don't think that God hates you. In fact, the Bible says that when he disciplines us, it's because he loves us, okay? And so if you're being disciplined a little harder than the next person, it's it's probably because you're one of his favorites, you know? And I know that sounds weird, but I want you to know that God has no, um, he has, there's no partiality with him. And so if you are one of his favorites, that does not exempt you from suffering. In fact, he's going to make you bear more fruit than the, than the next person. And so there's only one way to bear fruit, and that is to push through some hard things. So just pat yourself on the back, give yourself a hug, and say, you know what? You are one of God's favorites, and that's why you're suffering the way you're suffering. And he's creating you into a tree of righteousness and a pillar for these next for this next season that we're going to walk into. Okay, so that was longer than I wanted it to be, but hope it blesses someone. God bless.